Today's signpost is numbers and statistics. When you notice that an author is using numbers, number words, or statistics, you gotta ask yourself, why did the author use those numbers or those amounts? The answers could help you come to a conclusion, make a comparison, or see details. Pfizer now says its vaccine is 95% effective and safe. The data just days away from being submitted to the FDA, where a vaccine advisory committee will decide whether it deserves emergency use authorization. What we want to see at the FDA vaccine advisory committee is all the data. I mean, because there, there, there are going to be unknowns here. The promising results, according to Pfizer, come from the ongoing phase three trial. More than 41,000 participants of different ethnicities and ages finding the vaccine was 94 percent effective in people 65 and older. There are also no serious safety concerns so far, although participants will be monitored for two years. In Philadelphia today, nurses protesting working conditions welcomed the vaccine news. I'm sure frontline workers are going to be amongst the front first to get it. So that's um, promising and exciting news for all of us. Wide scale distribution will take months. The vaccine, which requires two doses, needs to be kept at extremely low temperatures in special freezers or packed in dry ice, creating a logistical challenge. The Secretary of Health and Human Services says Operation Warp Speed is ready to start shipping within 24 hours of authorization. There is already a federal stockpile of Pfizer's vaccine, as well as a similarly developed vaccine from Moderna. By the end of December, we expect to have about 40 million doses of these two vaccines available for distribution, pending FDA authorization, enough to vaccinate about 20 million of our most vulnerable. Today, there was also news on the testing front. The FDA issuing emergency use authorization for an at-home test promising to be highly accurate, a do-it-yourself kit made by Lucera that gives results in 30 minutes. It will cost $50 and require a doctor's prescription. An important development, but officials say it is just a first step towards testing. Okay, so what facts did you learn from those numbers and statistics? Did those facts help you come to any conclusions about the vaccines? Okay, take a look at this next video. Pay attention for the numbers and statistics and see if it helps you find facts, make conclusions, or draw inferences. Good morning, my little lunatics, and welcome back to another edition of On the Lake with Jake. My name is Jacob Westman, and today I am out in the middle of Lake Minnetonka to discuss Minnesota state bird, the common loon. The common loon it may be called, but there is nothing common about this magnificent animal. The loon is a diver and catches all of its food swimming underwater. These deep divers have been recorded at depths of over 180 feet or 55 meters. At those depths, there's an incredible 90 pounds of pressure being exerted on every inch of your body. And unless you're a professional, your lungs will likely explode. You'd be better off getting stepped on by an overweight elephant. Their dives typically last about a minute, but have been clocked in at well over 15 minutes as well. The loon's physical makeup is key to their incredible skills. Their legs are positioned further back on their body for more explosive swimming power. And unlike most birds, many of their bones are solid, helping them reach those amazing depths. These traits, however, make it plenty challenging to fly and walk on land. As a result, they stick to the water as much as they can, only going ashore to nest and only flying when absolutely necessary. I can understand that. These well-dressed water birds are found throughout North America, breeding in the north and wintering in the south and along the coasts. Its scientific name is Gavia immer, and is classified in a family of diver birds significantly different from other floating birds like ducks, geese, and swans. The genus Gavia comes from the Latin for seabird, and the species immer may derive from the Latin emergo, roughly meaning to submerge. A more fitting handle for this near fish-like bird I can't think of. The name loon possibly comes from the Old English luma, meaning lummox or clumsy. It's also possible that the name is derived from Old Norse, meaning lomar, meaning to lament. This would likely be in reference to the loon's sorrowful call. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. No, not that type of call. Yeah, that's more like it. However, it does not share similarities with words like lunar, lunatic, or loony, aside from basic phonetics. 
meaning they sound the same, but are unrelated otherwise. Speaking of sound, loons were unseen and unheard of in our neck of the woods when I was a child. They're the state bird, and you practically had to drive to Canada to see one. But strong common sense environmental regulations were put in place, and years later, we have witnessed a resurgence of top avian predators like the common loon, the Cooper's hawk, and the American bald eagle. Without rules against the use of certain types of chemicals that are harmful in excess, like mercury, arsenic, and cadmium, or other pollutants that can poison the atmosphere, like DDT, CFCs, and MBAs, this vital aspect of our food chain would not be living around our fair shores. It may not be living anywhere at all had it not been for these forward-thinking social and business practices that preserve our habitat for future generations. I, for one, am glad that my daughter won't need to drive eight hours to see the beauty of a loon and won't need to learn about our nation's symbol, the bald eagle, in a history book. Our environment is fragile and precious but we still have time to make things right and protect the many vital resources in our world. Thanks again for listening to me talk. I know your time is valuable and you'd probably rather be outside. So remember, as always, be happy, stay healthy, and let's make some history. Cheers. So, what numbers and statistics did you notice? Why do you think Mr. Westman added them? Gee, I wonder what you're going to do next. Either way, pay attention to numbers and statistics.